Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another session of IGCSC Math Preparation. My name is Erfan, and today the topic that I have prepared for you is about calculations and order. So I suggest you to pause the video and try to answer these questions yourself. If you know how to answer these questions, I suggest you to skip this video and move on to the next one um, because uh, this is quite a, sh a, a very short topic. If you go through any past year paper question, especially paper one or two, which is core and uh, extended respectively, you will always come across a question that they ask you to do a very simple arithmetic operation using a calculator, or you might be given a bunch of numbers. This could be in a form of decimals or fraction, and you will be asked to write them in an orderly fashion from smallest to the largest or from the largest to the smallest, right? And it usually carries one or two marks. Uh, and since I'm preparing these videos for uh, for the students who are um, preparing themselves for IGCSE math exam, I have to cover all the topics in the syllabus. So let's begin with the first question. As you can see, you're given seven numbers. They're all in the form of decimals and you're asked to list them down in, in an order of magnitude from smallest to largest. You are allowed to use a calculator for this. However, this is quite easy question. I don't think you need a calculator for that. Let's examine these numbers one by one. So we have um, six here, six point something. This is exactly six. This is 0 0.6, 0 0.66. So it's, it looks a bit confusing at first glance, but it would help a lot if you unite all of them in a way that if you look at the largest decimal points, um, here, these, these two numbers, right? They, they go up to three decimal point. So maybe we can add zeros to other numbers to make them a three decimal point uh, number as well, meaning which I can make this 6.600. This one, I can make it 0, 060. 0. I just add a zero because I'm, I want to fulfill this position, right? That the third position, this is already up to three decimal point. This one, I just add one more zeros. This one, two zeros. And this one, two zeros as well. Okay, and this is already, so no need to touch that. And now, if you look, let's, let's search for the smallest. So those that starts with six, we're gonna skip them right away. Let's take a look at this guy. This is 600,000 and this is 660,000. But this guy here, is 60,000. So definitely this should be the smallest. So I write that here. This is the first one I'm gonna begin with. And then we move on to those numbers which we have the digit six right after the decimal point. This is 600, this is 660, and this is 606. So of course, 600 must come first because we're going from smallest to largest, then it's 606 and then 660,000, right? So this, the answer would be 600,000 and then 0 0.606 and then 0 0.660. So let me put a comma between those to separate them and then the fifth number would be, I think we're done with numbers smallest, smaller than one. So it's time to move on to the numbers that begin with six, which is this, um, this, and this. Well, of course, six is smaller than the rest. 
of those, so we have six here. Um, but I think I made a mistake here. I should put the original numbers, guys. The blue ones are there to help me. So I have to get rid of those extra zeros that was not there originally, and I have to erase them. So let me go ahead and do that. So I erase two zeros here and uh, yeah, one zero here. Okay, that's correct. So don't make the mistake that I just did. This is six. And then between this guy and this guy, so this is 600 and this one is 606. So of course it is clear which one is larger and that's it. I have written them in an orderly fashion from smallest to largest, right? So you have to read the question very carefully because these questions are quite easy. If they ask you to list them down from largest to smallest, uh, don't get too excited and list them from smallest to largest, which is wrong. So make sure you read the question carefully. And the second one is calculation. So again, for this, you're allowed to use a calculator. However, I wanna highlight something here. You might have heard of the, the bot mass rule, um, which is the basically the order of operations. So the priority is with um, brackets, right? Brackets and um, the O is for order, the, the power, right? The index, it could be square root as well, square root of two or two to the power of two, something like those. And then D is for division, right? M is for multiplication and A and S is for um, addition and subtraction right, addition and subtraction respectively. So this is the priority. And if you king in your scientific calculator, some scientific calculator, if you're dealing with the fraction, they have a feature which by clicking that um, button, they give you um, the a fraction directly and then you have to key in the numerator and the denominator separately. But that's not always the case, it depends on the series, which series you're using. Um, the one that I'm using is the, 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 the Casio FX 570, and I don't have that option. So if I'm working with a, uh, with a fraction, I have to be very careful. I have to separate the numerator and denominator. So I have to basically, when I key in, I have to open a bracket because the calculator doesn't know when the denominator, when the numerator ends and when the denominator begins. And then when I key in the division button and yeah, yeah I press the division button and this is, yeah, that's it. Then it would give me the correct answer, which in this case, I believe it should be three, right? However, if you, you, um, you don't wanna use a calculator still, you should know with this rule, um, which one comes first, which one you have to do first. For example, here, four squares, you have to get the answer for four square first, which is 16. And then you add up these two, you might say that, uh, then what happens to the division? I thought the division comes before addition, right? Well, the thing is this whole thing, again, it's in the numerator, right? It's in the numerator. And um, you cannot perform division unless you simplify the numerator and uh, denominator, the top and bottom as much as you can, right? We're gonna talk, talk about simplification of a fraction in the next video, but here, you have to be careful. And again, if you use a calculator, so it would be basically, you open the bracket and then 
you key, uh, you press the division button and then four, and there is a square button, right? On, on, on your calculator, it looks like this X square. So you press that and automatically it raised four to the power of two. And then you would get the answer, which is basically um, two. The final answer should be two. So here it might look a bit scary, but it's not. Just again, make sure you put the numerators in the bracket, right? And automatically the calculator will take care of the rest. Uh, because when it comes to this addition, it knows that it has to find the answer for these two fractions first, which is basically division, and then perform this addition, right? So these two I separated with a bracket. So this is a, a matter of division. This is the matter of division as well. So, and the final answer that you get, it should be, this is actually uh, three, nine, 12 divided by five, that is 2.4 plus, and uh, 1.5, and the final answer should be 3.9. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the final answer is 3.9. Now, this is another cool question, which you're asked to put the bracket um, in the correct position in order to make this expression equal to the number on the right-hand side. So here we want to get the 7 out of this. Well, you know the, um, the priority is with division. So if you just key in everything like this, uh, what does the calculator do is that it calculates 6 over 2 or 6 divided by 2 first and then add it with 8. All right. So the answer would be 8 plus 3, which is equal to 11. But however, we want a 7. We don't want the 11. So I have to make use of a bracket somehow, place it somewhere, um, and hopefully we can get the seven out of it. If you look um, at the first two numbers, eight and six, if I add them up together, I get 14. And if I divide the result by two, I get the seven. So the correct position for the brackets is here, right? I put six and eight in the bracket and whatever comes out of it, because the order of calculation is the priority is with the bracket. So you do the bracket first and then the division. Remember this about mass rule? So, or some books, they call it, if I'm not mistaken, uh, PEM, PEM does. If you, if you hear something like this, uh, it's the same thing. Basically, instead of brackets, they say parentheses. And this E is the, um, the, uh, the exponent, right? So it's, which is the same thing as order, the exponential. And M is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So it's the same thing if you see that in some books. Now let's get to the second question here. Again, if you have no brackets here, please do everything. Oh, the, the, the other four is the same. Yeah, if we have um, no brackets at all, what would be the answer? The calculator performs the multiplication here in the middle first. So we have four plus 30 minus one, five times six, 30. And it doesn't matter which one you do first. Uh, addition and subtraction, they have the same uh, priority. So uh, we, we start from left to right, right? We start from left and work our way um, to right. And the answer is 34 minus one, which is 33. And only this guy is 33. So for this guy here, we don't need any bracket at all. Okay, for the third one, we don't need bracket at all because if you just follow the order of operation, the, the answer 
comes out to be 33 automatically. However, for the rest, we need a little bit of manipulation. We need to place the bracket, or oh, it's like solving a puzzle. I need a 45, and 45 is a famous number. If you look at the timetable, we get uh, the, the multiplication table, we get uh, um, nine, it's nine times five, right? And if I add four and five together, I get a nine. And if I subtract one from uh, six, I get uh, five, right? And then I perform the multiplication in the middle. So nine times five is 45. So I need two brackets here, right? And they also, also mentioned put any brackets, maybe we need to put more than one sometimes, just like in this case. Now let's move on to the next one. We need a 53. So what am I gonna do here? And no. Okay, I thought of something just now. The, the, the answer for the last question, six. If I put a bracket here, right? If I put a bracket here, that would be five times this fives would be four, 25 plus four would be 29. So we got this as well. We got this, we got this. And the last one, getting a 53. So what do you think guys? All right, so 53, um, now, if I multiply nine by six, I get 54. And if I subtract one from it, I get uh, 53. So I need a bracket here, right? I need to put four and five in the bracket and multiply it by six, then subtract one uh, from it. So that was a nice question. So move on to the next one. This is something which we touched a little bit on previous video. However, it's a common question. They might give you a number line and ask you to write the corresponding inequality or vice versa, meaning which in this case, you will be given an inequality and asked to draw its corresponding number line. And for that, the only thing that you have to be careful is the beginning and uh, the, the beginning point and the end point. So, here we're looking at all the numbers greater than zero. So you can make the center zero, not necessarily, and maybe just few numbers after and before that. Since X is equal to zero, so my beginning point should be a solid circle and everything greater than that, I just highlight it. And where should I stop? Well, since there is no maximum limit or the upper bound, I just um, leave an arrow head, right, on the other hand. So, or if, or something like this, this is more practical, right? An arrow head, which is indicating all the numbers greater than zero, right? So maybe I erase this and place this, this guy right here. Okay. And for the next one, I'm gonna draw another number line here. So then the X is basically bounded between zero and four. So um, I'm gonna write my zeros slightly to the left so I have more space. So the beginning and the end point is clear and none of them is included. You don't see any equality there. So the starting point and the end point should be a hollow circle and everything between you just highlight it and this is the final result, right? So these, these topics are very common, especially in paper two. Maybe I do two more questions about uh, very similar to question number one, 
um, the magnitude because here I gave you the example of decimal. Maybe next in the next slide I give you example of fractions. So take a look at these numbers, and you're asked to basically um, order them from um, this time starting with the largest. So these are the numbers: half, one third, six over thirteen. 4 over 5, 7 over 8, 2 over 19. There is a way, actually, you can answer this without a calculator. However, it might be difficult for you at first. Uh, but we're going to learn uh, some of that techniques in the next chapter, which is about uh, fractions. So we will learn how to uh, compare two fractions together okay this is the first question and the next one let's uh, make it more interesting and uh, we talk about a quantity rather than rather than just numbers for example masses so you will be given a bunch of masses 4 kg 3500 grams three fourth or yeah three fourth of kg 700 grams and one kg so for the first one you can just grab your calculator quickly and key in for this one of course it's half for this one it is 0 0.33 with, with the repetition of three right and this one would be 0 0.4615 i'm not gonna key in the rest of the numbers 4 over 5 is 0 0.8 7 over 18 would be 0 0.3 and then with the repetition of 8 right and 2 over 9 uh, 2 over 19 is basically 0 0.0052 and the, the rest doesn't matter because it's already 0 0.1 this should be the smallest number and it was kind of obvious at first glance because it has the largest denominator and a very small numerator right but they want be careful this question they want us to list it from we start from the largest so largest is of course this guy and then this so this should be one two and the third one okay the number that begins with Four, right we have the digit four after the decimal point this should be the largest for the fourth one we have two numbers which begins with three after the decimal point um, however this is the largest one because right after that we have eight the repetition of eight this guy here we have the repetition of three and of course lastly this should be the smallest among all Again, the question said, start with start with largest, unlike the previous question. So you have to read the question very carefully. Um, they want us to, uh, what is the order of magnitude? You have to read the question carefully. So here, same thing. They want us to start from largest. And the difference is here we have unit. In this case, that's the unit of math. You have to make the units same before that makes your job way easier. You have to make the unit same before you continue. So either convert all of them to grams or convert all of them to kilograms. So in this case, I prefer grams. You can do it mentally as well. In order, you know that one kg is equal to 1000 grams. So if I divide these numbers, this and this by 1000, I get um, my, I get the answer in kg. So this is 3.5 kg and this is 0 0.7 kg. Now the comparison is easy. However, all of them are in decimals except this guy three over four is 0 0.75 we can use a calculator for that and this is 0 0.75 kg now the answer reveals itself 
I think uh, since they said from the largest, this should be number one, 4 kg, 3.5 kg, and then we move on to 1 kg. And between these two, this is 75 and this is 70, right? If you borrow one, if it borrows one zero, and this becomes uh, number four, and the smallest of all would be 0 0.7. And I think this is it for this topic. Um, thank you for watching this video and good luck.